JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week May the 31st until June the 4th. I am Harold Ambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read uh, the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, following the RBNZ last week, this week it's the turn of the RBA to decide on monetary policy. We don't expect any change, but it would be interesting to see whether they are still willing to expand their bond purchases in July. As for the data, we get Eurozone's preliminary CPIs for May, Canada's GDP for the first quarter March, Australia's GDP for the first quarter, the US employment report for May, and the Canadian employment report for the same month. Uh, which may reshape expectations around the ECBs, the Feds, and the Bank of Canada's uh, future policy plans. But let's take things uh, from the beginning. Okay, on uh, Monday appears to be a light day, with the only release worth mentioning being Germany's preliminary, excuse me, Germany's preliminary inflation data for May. Both the CPI and HICP rates are expected to have risen to 2.3 and 2.5% year over year from 2 and 2.1% respectively, something that would uh, raise speculation for a similar reaction in Eurozone's, in Eurozone's headline CPI due out on uh, Tuesday. Markets in the US and the UK will stay closed today. It's a Memorial Day in the US, while in the UK it's a bank holiday. Now on Tuesday, during the Asian session, the RBA decides on monetary policy. At the prior meeting, officials kept uh, policy unchanged, but noted that despite the strong economic recovery in Australia, inflation, inflation pressures remain subdued in most parts of the economy, and that at the July gathering, they will consider further bond purchases. Since then, the employment report for April showed that the unemployment rate slid to 5.5% from 5.7%, but bearing in mind that the employment change revealed a 30.6 thousand job loss, we believe that the unemployment rate may have declined for, uh, for the wrong reasons. Indeed, the participation rate slid to 66% from 66.3%, from suggesting that more people have been discouraged to register for unemployment benefits, thereby resulting in a slide in the unemployment rate. What's more, the wage price, the wage price index ticked up to 1.5% from 1.4%, but although this is a move in the desired direction, it confirms the bank's view that inflation is likely to stay subdued or at least any spikes are likely to be due to transitory factors. With all that in mind, we expect RBA policymakers to stand part at this gathering, but to reiterate the view that they may add to their bond purchases at the July gathering. The Aussie may slide somewhat in the aftermath of uh, this uh, meeting, but uh, we expect its broader faith to depend on developments surrounding the broader market sentiment. Now, later in the day, we get Eurozone's preliminary CPIs for May. The headline rate is expected to rise further to 1.9% year over year from 1.6%, while the HICP excluding energy and food rate is forecast to have ticked up to 0.9% from 0.8% year over year. Although the headline rate is expected to match the ECB's objective of below but close to 2%, the weak uh, underlying inflationary pressures suggest uh, that uh, the improvement in the in headline inflation may be due to may be due to transitory factors 
After all, last week, uh, ECB chief economist Philip Lane has pushed back against the inflationist back narrative, adding that uh, markets will take uh, years to return to pre-crisis levels and that stimulus is still needed to secure the recovery. On top of that, a week uh, earlier, ECB President Christine Lagarde said that it is essential that monetary and fiscal support are not withdrawn too soon. Therefore, we don't expect uh, an increase in the headline CPI rate in Eurozone to support the Euro match, or uh, at least at the time of the release, or hurt uh, European equity markets. Now, later in the day, Canada's GDP for the first quarter and March is due to be released. The annualized quarter over quarter rate for the first three months of 2021 is expected to have declined to 6.6 from 9.6%. Uh, However, the month over month rate for March is anticipated to have risen to 1% from 0.4%, which, following the search in both the headline and core CPI rates for the month of April, is likely to dismiss questions as to whether the Bank of Canada has acted correctly at its last gathering when it scaled back its uh, QE purchases. However, a lot with regards to speculation of that front may depend on the results of Canada's employment uh, report due out on uh, on Friday. Now, our view for the Luni to return on the driver's seat again, we need to see improvement in the labor market as well. Now, as for the rest of uh, Tuesday's uh, scheduled data releases, we have Switzerland's uh, GDP for the first quarter, which is expected to reveal that the economy has contracted 0.5% after expanding 0.3% in the fourth quarter of 2020 as well as the final manufacturing PMIs for May from the Eurozone, the UK and the US, which, as it is always the case, uh, are expected to confirm uh, uh, their preliminary estimates. The ASM manufacturing index for the month is also coming out and expectations are for an unchanged print at 60.7. Staying at elevated levels, the ASM Manufacturing Index is likely to confirm that uh, the U.S. economy is recovering from the damages of the pandemic at a decent pace, but how the markets will be traded in the near term may depend more on the outcome of Friday's employment report for uh, the month. Now, on uh, Wednesday, Asian time, Australia releases its uh, GDP data for the first quarter, with the quarter-over-quarter quarter rate expected to have declined to 1% from 3.1%, uh, but the year-over-year year one to have rebounded to 0.2% from minus 1.1%. In our view, although we may see an improvement in the year-over-year year, uh, rate, the second consecutive slowdown in quarterly terms may add more credence to the RBA's choice to expand its stimulative efforts um, uh, in July and thereby hurt uh, the Aussie a bit more. Now on Thursday, we have more data coming out, of, uh, coming out from Australia and this is a trade balance and retail sales uh, both for April. The nation's uh, trade surplus is expected to have increased to 8 billion Aussies from 5.57 billion Aussies, while retail sales are anticipated to have expanded 1% month over month to the same pace as in March. The final market services and composite PMIs for May from the Eurozone, the UK and the US, uh, as well as the US ISM non-manufacturing PMI for uh, the month, are also due to be released. The final market prints are expected to confirm their preliminary estimates, while the ASM index is forecast to have inched up to 63 from 62.7. Finally, on Friday, the main event is likely to be the U.S. employment report for May. Non-farm payrolls are, are anticipated to have accelerated to 650,000 from 266,000 in April, while the unemployment rate is forecast to have slid to 5.9 from 6.1%. Average hourly earnings are expected to have slowed uh, to 0.2 from 0.7%, but this is likely to take the year-over-year -year rate up to 1.6 from 0.3%, suggesting that increasing wages are likely to translate to even higher inflation in the months to come. 
something like that, combined with the recent surge in both uh, headline and core inflation, as well as remarks by Fed, uh, several Fed uh, policymakers over quantitative easing tapering, may add to speculation that the Fed uh, may need to withdraw policy sooner than previously anticipated, and thereby support, uh, support the dollar. Strangely, Although this would still suggest a recovering, a recovering economy, it could hurt equity markets, as scaling back quantitative easing sooner could result in raising interest rates sooner as well. Let's not forget that high growth companies are valued based on earnings expected years into the future, and thus when expectations over higher interest rates rise, there is more concern that the discounted present values of those companies will decline. Now, at the same time as the U.S. jobs data, we get employment report. We get the employment report for May from Canada as well. The unemployment rate is expected to have ticked up to 8.2 percent from 8.1 percent, but the net change in employment is anticipated to show that the economy has lost uh, much less uh, jobs than it did in April. Specifically, it is expected to show a 22.5 thousand jobs uh, loss following a 207.1 thousand uh, tumble in April. In our view, this is not the best uh, report the loony traders uh, could get, but it is better than the previous one. Thus, they may not sell the currency massively if the results are uh, near their forecasts, especially if the GDP data due out on Tuesday come, come, in, come on, come on uh, the decent side. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much uh, for watching and listening. I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next Monday. If you are interested in more detail, uh, detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on, um, on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 7.30 a.m. GMT. So goodbye and have a nice day. JFT, just fair and direct.